Shavkat Rachmanov is quickly becoming a major fan favorite within the sport of mixed martial arts. Through 17 career fights, he has scored an insane 17 straight finishes, a pretty much balanced split of 8 knockouts and 8 submissions. With an unbeaten record and an impressive skill set, he poses a significant threat to anyone in his weight class. But perhaps no fighter is more in danger of falling victim to Rachmanov's uniquely effective style than Kamzat Chimaev. Both men are prime contenders within the welterweight division. And if Boris does in fact decide to stick around at or eventually make a return to the 170 pound division, there may be a very difficult challenge in front of him. At this point, it's easy to favor Kamzat's style over any other member of the 170 top 10 guys, like the champion Leon Edwards, the aging Kamaru Usman, Colby Covington, Gilbert Burns. There are tough fights for Chimaev there, of course, but his aggressive style of grappling dominance, coupled with his danger levels on the feet, this thing should make him the favorite going into these matchups. However, when the name Shavkat Rachmanov is brought up, things become a little dicey for Chimaev. Not only is Shavkat one of the most lethal finishers in the sport today, but his well rounded game makes him an absolute nightmare no matter where the fight is taking place. So let's take a dive into Rachmanov's career and see why so many people have packed him as future champion of the welterweight division. Rachmanov's rise through the regional scene has been a truly riveting thing to experience. Born in Uzbekistan but raised in his home of Kazakhstan, he began his MMA career in 2014 and quickly established himself as a force to be reckoned with. He won his first four fights by submission, showcasing a grappling prowess that would become his calling card or at least until he rounded out his striking game with some insanely technical weapons. Through his early years, he bounced between the renowned Russian promotion M1 and the Kazakhstan-based organization KZ MMAF, beating and finishing every fighter that came his way. Like Chimaev would do in Brave Sifi, Shavkat was starting to work up a reputation for himself. The hardcores were starting to set up and take notice of this guy's electric fighting style. However, it was in the final two fights of his time on the original scene where we really got to see this guy come alive as top tier prospect. He won the M1 Global Welterweight Championship with a second round TKO in front of a crowd of his countrymen, and then he defended it successfully with a knockout in the first. At 12 0, Shavkat and his 100% finishing record finally got the attention of the UFC. And if it looked like his work on the original scene was good, Rachmanov has been nothing short of spectacular since entering the top flight. He won his debut fight against Alex Oliveira via submission, locking in a guillotine choke in the first round. It was a stylish and totally lethal display of everything that makes Shavkat special. A second round submission of Michael Prozarish came next another clinical display that gave Shavkat's fans even more reasons to get excited. By the time his third fight came, we already had reason to expect something spectacular. And sure enough, a spinning back kick KO of Carlston Harris made this man's potential painfully obvious to anyone who tuned in. He was beating this mid-level Walter Raids like they had no rights to be in the same cage as him. It wasn't until he fought Neil Magny that we really got a chance to see what this guy was capable at the highest level. Magne is a formidable opponent and one of the most skilled gatekeepers in the sport, meaning that anybody who wants to get a sniff of the top 10 is probably going to have to take him on. Similarly, Chimaev had to take on the leech Li Xiangling to book his own ranking. And though Kamzat's performance was obviously far quicker and more destructive, Shavkat sliced through Neil Magny with a level of skill that definitively proved that he was ready for a greater test. And that's exactly what we saw last time around when Rachmanov received a big step up in the form of Jeff Neal. Tasked with turning in a big performance on a John Jones pay-per-view, the eyes of the fighting world were fixed on UFC 285 and every fighter who made an appearance on the main card. When all was said and done, Shavkat's stunning performance had earned him fight of the night honors, a cool 50k bonus and a legion of new fans. This was a real breakout victory for Rachmanov. One that started to really fuel the conversation over who would actually win in a fight between him and Chimaev. And at 17-0, it's clear that he's ready for anything in this sport. 
but it's not just Rachmanov's unbeaten record that makes him a danger to Chumaev. It's his technical skill and his ability to adapt to any form of difficulty in the cage. Rachmanov is a well-rounded fighter with a strong grappling base, but he's also a skillful striker with power in both his hands and feet. Fighting Shavkat is not like taking on your run-of-the-mill opponent. No, his 17 straight finishes haven't happened by accident. This guy has an innate ability to make reads on you. And while his finishing rate of 100% might suggest that he's a fast starter, he is actually a lot more methodical and slow-paced when he needs to be. His striking game involves setting traps, feints, footwork and his ability to spring on his adversary once he has collected enough data he is truly second to none. But Rachmanov is not just a one-dimensional fighter. He's also an excellent striker with a diverse arsenal of kicks and punches. He's comfortable fighting at range and he's not afraid to trade blows with his opponents. His striking is quite crafty when he's in a clinch, where he's able to use his size and leverage to land devastating knees and elbows. It doesn't seem like there's a real weakness you can point to in his game. And when it comes to matching up with Chimaev, Rachmanov is perhaps the most dangerous opponent he could face. Like Chimaev, Rachmanov is a well-rounded fighter with excellent grappling and striking skills. He's also similar size to Chimaev. Kamzat has a penchant for the finish just like Shavkat does, but where they differ isn't how they go about achieving it. Chimaev generally comes out the gates like a bull, whereas Rachmanov warms into a contest. While Chimaev has burst onto the scene in spectacular fashion, he's only had a handful of fights in the UFC. Rachmanov, on the other hand, has been fighting professionally for nearly six years and has certainly rounded out his game quite well. Every fight starts on the feet, and if Kamzat cannot immediately drag Shavkat to the ground, he could be giving his opponent highly valuable time to make his reads count. If the fight between Rachmanov and Chimaev were to happen, it would likely be a battle of wills between two highly skilled fighters. Both men have shown an incredible ability to finish fights, with the majority of the victories coming via submission or TKO. It would be a clash of styles, with Kamzat more than likely preferring to a fight on the mat, and Shavkat clearly the more technical striker. Perhaps the most unique aspect of Chimaev's game is his mindset. He is a fighter who is always looking for the finish, whether it's on the feet or after securing the takedown. He has a killer instinct that is rare in the sport, and he is not afraid to take risks or even rush his offense in order to achieve his goal. Chimaev's willingness to take risks and go for the finish is what makes him such an exciting fighter to watch. But what if the first takedown fails? What if he can't navigate Shavkat's excellent control of range? If Chimaev is dragged into a striking matchup with a guy as lethal as Rachmanov, it could spell some real trouble. Kamzat has earned a reputation as a ruthless grappler, winning all but one of his fights by either submission or TKO slash KO, but his stand-up game is not quite as polished. Look, the dude can certainly crack, he showed as much during the Gerald Mearshart fight at 185 pounds, and in his clash with Gilbert Burns, where the idea of shooting in for the takedown wasn't as appealing, he definitely proved that his toughness and grit is where it needs to be. Rachmanov might not have the overall fundamentals of a guy like Chimaev, and perhaps his chances of latching onto a submission would decrease drastically with Bors and his top game. But given his own Sambo background, it's pretty clear that he would be a level or two about the likes of Lee Jingliang and Kevin Holland. And as Alexander Volkanovsky just showed up against Islam Makachev, this current wave of relentless wrestling offense is not unstoppable. It just needs the right opponent, the right body type and game plan. It's hard to know if the UFC would ever make this fight without a belt on the line. Probably not. But judging of the trajectory we've seen each man follow so far, it's pretty clear that they will meet eventually. And though Kamzat is the one who has the majority share of the hype, given his global celebrity status, it's becoming very clear that Rachmanov is the dark horse of the division. The guy that not many people are queuing up to fight. And after 17 professional outings, it's easy to see why. Both men are in or approaching their respective primes. Both are just about as violent as it comes within the sport of mixed martial arts. And for our money, these are the two best newcomers to the welterweight top 10 in years. Do the right thing, Dana, and give the fans this crazy matchup. But what do you think of the rise of Shavkat Rachmanov? And how do you think these two guys match up on paper? Do you agree that Shavkat could ask far more interesting questions of the unbeaten Chimaev than the likes of Edwards, Usman, Burns and Covington ever could? Do let us know what you think in the comment section.